This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. You know, in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, there's this scene towards the end of the film where Mrs. Cratchit brings in a steamed pudding that she's made, and her husband says, a triumph, my dear, a triumph. Well, this is my version of a steamed pudding that I've been making for years for my family. Now, when you make a steamed pudding, you have to get a steamed pudding mold, and it looks like this. It's a metal mold, and it has little, um, clasps on the side and a lid and the reason that it needs to be sealed like this is because you steam it on the stove in boiling water so get your hands on a steamed pudding mold and then we're gonna go ahead and get it ready now I go ahead and melt just a tablespoon or two of butter and I get my pastry brush and I want to really brush that melted butter all over the inside of the lid as well as inside the mold there's usually a lot of of design patterns and then you have that tube that comes up the center and you want to make sure that it is nicely coated in this melted butter then once you've prepared the pan you can just set that aside now you're not going to believe how easy this steamed cranberry pudding is to put together all we do is we get a bowl and we put one and a half cups of flour in it then we add two teaspoons of baking soda. We kind of mix that up together. Then we add a half a cup of dark molasses and then a half a cup of hot water. And then just with your spatula, mix these ingredients up together. Now I have to tell you, at this point, this is not gonna smell great. The molasses is very, very strong, but it dissipates um, when you cook it out. So just stir it up together like this and then get two cups of fresh cranberries. And I've washed those, and you do wanna pick through them, make sure there aren't any squishy cranberries cranberries and then you just take your spatula and you fold it together this is all the ingredients that are in this pudding now I have to tell you the first time I made this a million years ago I thought this is gonna taste horrible because it looks horrible and I just thought this is gonna be a disaster it ended up being one of my family's favorite desserts see the flavor is incredible by the time you steam it so once you've got the batter done go ahead and get your pudding mold and notice how carefully I'm putting um, the batter in around the tube so you want to go ahead and take your time and do that and then once you get that all in go ahead and kind of move it around so it's fairly even inside the mold then you're going to get the um, lid and you're going to put it back on top and make sure that you clamp the latches down so that it's on good and tight. And then just for safety's sake, we're going to take a piece of foil and we're going to put it tightly over the top as well. Now over at the stove I have my giant soup pot and then I have a little vegetable steamer basket that I'm going to use as a rack and I'm going to put that in the bottom. And then I'm going to put my pudding inside. Now we're going to be steaming this, so you need to get a pitcher of water and you want to pour the water around the mold. Try to avoid pouring it on top of it. So just pour it on the side. And we want to put in enough water so that it goes halfway up the side of the mold, just around to there. Now we've got the heat on medium high and this is just going to start to come to a boil after a few minutes and when it does you're going to put the lid on, you're going to turn it down to low and you're going to put the timer on for one and a half hours because that's how long that this pudding needs to steam. Now about 15 minutes before the pudding is done, we're going to make a great little sauce. So in a pan, we're going to add a half a cup of butter that I've diced up, a half a cup of sugar, a half a cup of light cream or half and half, and two teaspoons of vanilla. And we're just going to put this on a medium high heat and we're going to start to cook 
it. Now what's going to happen is it's going to start to come to a boil and when that happens you're going to want to turn the heat down a little bit and really keep stirring it. It's going to start to slightly thicken in just a minute or so. And then we just go ahead and move this right off the heat and let it sit there until we're ready to serve. Now at this point the pudding is done so let's go ahead and get it out of the pot. Now when you're dealing with this everything is really hot so make sure you're using pot holders and you're just going to lift the pudding mold out and have a little rack nearby that you can set it down on. Then we're going to go ahead and pull the foil off and then we're going to unhook the latches on either side and go ahead and lift the top off. Now you're going to be amazed. Look at how much this has risen up into the mold and what a beautiful color it is. Now we want to get it out of the mold right now. So take a platter, put it on top and again with your pot holders, just take the whole thing and flip it over. And if you let it sit there just for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, you're going to hear it and it's going to plop right out and then you can pick it up by the hinges and look at how beautiful this is. Now you do want to serve this pudding hot so let me show you how I do it. Of course you have to get a sprig of holly. I actually use a silk piece of holly and I like to then dust it with powdered sugar to make it look like snow and then what you do is you take your um, sauce and you can pour that into a little gravy boat and then you are ready to serve this masterpiece. Now a couple of quick reminders, if you haven't been to our new website, you've got to go to it. It's just beautiful. And when you get there, if you haven't, don't forget to vote um, for the Tasty Awards. I've been nominated as a finalist and all the information is there. And voting does end by January 5th. Well, this really is a triumph, my dear. And like I said, my family has been loving this steamed cranberry pudding for years. I make it every Christmas. Now, if you want to give it a go at home, just go to our website, visit the Sweet World show notes, and I'll have the recipe there for you. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email. Happy holidays, and I'll see you next time.